Benjamin Franklin once famously said, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. What this means is it's a lot easier to prevent a screw up by being prepared than to try and fix it once everything is screwed up. Today, we're talking about the top five things that people seem to forget or get wrong when they're measuring for their bathroom remodel. And we're gonna get into that right now. Hi, I'm Dave with Remodel Media, and since 2005, I've been helping people put together kitchens, baths, outdoor kitchens, and various other home renovation projects. I'm on a mission to eliminate regret, and I do that by bringing you the latest tips, tricks, and products for your home remodel. So if you're new here, follow along, we'll have some fun. We're going to get the first three right out of the way because they all involve the toilet. The first is the water coming into and going out of your toilet. The measurement for where the water leaves your toilet is called the toilet rough-in measurement, which is the measurement from the finished wall to the center of the drain in the floor, not including baseboards and trim. You can check this measurement at home by measuring from the wall to the bolts in your floor that hold the toilet down. Standard measurements will be 10, 12, and 14 inches, with the most common being 12 inch. You'll also want to make note of where the water supply is in relation to your toilet. This will determine whether or not you are able to install a skirted toilet. Now, there are various types of skirted toilets out there. On some of them, the skirt comes straight down and you need to offset the water supply. On others, the skirt has a taper and you may be able to use it with your existing water supply. But again, this is a case of measure twice, cut once, make sure you avoid that remodel regret. I remember the first customer I ever convinced to put a skirted toilet. Uh, picture it, San Marcos, California, about 2008. I'm working for a high-end design showroom and we're having a grand opening event. I meet with a client who is redesigning her bathroom and she plans it all out and she's very excited to take home this skirted toilets that we had on special that day. I believe they were a Kohler Persuade. She purchases two of them and and takes them home. Less than an hour later, I see her pull right back into the parking lot, a disappointed look on her face. The plumber that was doing her project tried to install the toilets, but couldn't because the angle stop interfered with the skirt. The next, of course, is a measurement from the wall to the nose of the toilet. The reason this measurement could be important is because a lot of people have round front toilets in their home now because of current issues with the door and or the pathway walking through and a lot of people are under the mistaken assumption that all they can have today is a round front toilet when they might prefer an elongated toilet if they could fit one but what a lot of people don't realize is a lot of modern toilets are actually compact elongated models which means they have a shorter overall projection than previous generation counterparts uh, and what that means is you might be able to avoid the bummer of a round fronted toilet if you just measure first, that is. Uh, and the third, of course, is the height. A lot of people don't realize that the height can actually matter on a toilet. The amount of times I've seen people try to put a new toilet in only to discover that it doesn't fit under the existing banjo top. You know that little countertop that runs over the top of your toilet. Not everybody has one. And I will say it is not the most popular anymore. Uh, I have taken out way more banjo tops than I've ever installed. Still, it is something that is important and needs to be taken into account. I've even seen people install a toilet successfully under a banjo top, only to realize later that they can't open their toilet tank because the banjo top is stopping them from taking the lid off the back of the toilet. So that toilet can never be serviced without completely removing it, which is a pain in the butt and no one wants that regret. The fourth measurement is for custom shower doors, the kind you get from contractors wardrobe, Arizona shower door, glass crafters. If you want to get a precise measurement on a sliding door, then you take a detailed measurement of the width at the bottom, the middle, and the top, and you use the smallest measurement. This will ensure a good fit. It is absolutely vital that you wait until the tile is done because an educated guess on how thick the tile and mortar is going to be isn't enough. You might get lucky, you might not. If you're measuring for a pivoting door, then measure along the center of the threshold of the shower base, especially if you have a neo-angle shower base. 
And of course, last but not least, going from a flat mirror to a medicine cabinet. It seems like a great idea, right? And in fact, in many ways it is. I mean, who doesn't need a little more storage in their home? So here's some things you need to know. If you're doing a surface mounted medicine cabinet, in other words, you're hanging the medicine cabinet and it's going to stick out, then you need to make sure that you measure your faucet, especially if it's got a high spout or if it's got a handle on top that lifts up. I've seen plenty of people install the medicine cabinet and then install the faucet only to realize that the door doesn't clear the spout or when they try to turn on the faucet and it has a handle on top and, and the handle hits the medicine cabinet, I know what you're thinking. Dave, why don't I just put in a recess cabinet? Why, anonymous viewer talking to me from behind that screen, you are absolutely correct, but you still need to double check something. If you are going to recess medicine cabinets, that means you're going to open up the wall. If opening up that wall, there is a better than average chance that you will see that there is a vent pipe that goes all the way up through the roof and you'll have to relocate that. You see, your drainage system needs to breathe. It needs air to function. Have you ever used the water cooler and as you filled up your cup, you saw air bubbles going glug, glug, glug into the jug? That is because the air is displacing the water. And the same thing happens in your drainage system. As the water and waste goes down the pipe, it needs to be able to pull in air to displace it. Otherwise, you'll end up with flow issues. Also, you need to vent sewer gases uh, and they need some place to go other than back into the house because that would be unpleasant. So encountering a vent pipe that goes up through the roof right behind the vanity is a fairly common occurrence and as such may need to be relocated if you're doing a recessed medicine cabinet. So there you go, the top five things I see people make mistakes when measuring for their bathroom remodel. What about you? Is there ever a time where you failed to measure twice, cut once? Tell me about it in the comments below. And as always, see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. I hope you got some good information out of that episode. Go ahead and click here for more videos. Go ahead and click here to subscribe. And make sure you check out the description below for relevant links to some of the products that we discussed today. And leave your comments and questions down below because I love answering them. As always, I'll see you in the next one.